Welcome back to another video of Turtles All the Way Down. Since my earliest childhood, I have been fascinated by the concept of aliens. The mystery and surreal nature of possible aliens, their worlds, their science, their societies. They have gripped my imagination. And as a child, the two most influential movies were Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind and E.T. the Extraterrestrial. They contributed to launching my lifelong trajectories through physics and astronomy, and my fascination of all things alien. I'm sure most of us have wondered at one point in their lives if we, the life of Earth, is all that there is. Are we alone in this vast universe? Are we the only examples of life? A single planet. In this series of videos, we will explore this topic with what we currently know scientifically. As a side note to this video, I recently put together a separate video expressing some of my thoughts on extraterrestrial intelligence and how it relates to UFOs or UAPs and religion. Check it out here. Immediately at the outset, and hopefully as a surprise to no one, I do not have an answer to the question of the existence of extraterrestrial life. No one does. I really wish we did. But alas, science has not yet yielded any strong evidence for alien life. It has, however, occasionally given some tantalizing hints of alien possibilities. I have decided to make some videos discussing what has been the scientific search's closest hits so far of extraterrestrial life. In this video and the next, we'll be discussing what possible biosignatures we have so far. The umbrella scientific term used for the search for extraterrestrial life is astrobiology, a sibling scientific field that specifically searches for evidence of alien technology is SETI, or the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Recently, two new terms have been created that sums up what it is that science is searching for in this field. Extraterrestrial biosignatures and extraterrestrial technosignatures. Biosignatures are those data that give evidence for biological life itself. Some examples of biosignatures would be biological gases, fossils, and complex organic matter. Technosignatures, on the other hand, are those pieces of evidence that indicate intelligence and technology. Examples of these would include industrial gases, city lights, radio signals, and engineering projects. These are the terms I'll follow in this set of videos. Let's start by looking at what possible biosignatures we may have for extraterrestrial life. In this video, we're going to focus on our inner solar system, namely Venus and Mars. First, let us travel to our nearest planet, Venus. In 2020, a study was published in the scientific journal Nature Astronomy about a team's detection of the gas phosphine, PH3, in the atmosphere of Venus. What made this a potentially significant find is that phosphine's only known source is biological. It comes from the decay of biologically organic material. The 2020 findings from the team, headed by Wales Cardiff University scientist Jane Greaves, has subsequently been under intense scrutiny and analysis. Later findings, including from the Sophia Airborne Telescope, did not find any and other researchers reinterpreted the Greaves team's findings as not phosphine, but instead sulfur dioxide. However, on July 6, 2023, a new announcement by Greaves at the National Astronomy Meeting at Cardiff University was given confirming and showing that there is indeed a steady source of phosphine at lower levels in the atmosphere of Venus. If accepted and confirmed, the existence of phosphine in the clouds of the hellishly hot planet Venus is exciting news for the possibility of actual life in the atmosphere of our nearest planet. Stay tuned on this moving front. 
A couple of NASA missions to Venus are currently under development, the Veritas orbital probe and the Da Vinci orbital and landing probes are all expected to launch around 2028 and 2029. They will investigate the atmosphere and surface of Venus. Flying past our own world, we're going to head for the rusty planet Mars. In 1976, two amazing NASA spacecraft landed on the surface of Mars. These were the Vikings 1 and 2 landers. Each had a suite of scientific equipment to test the Martian environment. This included a set of biological labs. A robotic arm was used to scoop up the Martian soil and was deposited into the onboard testers. Four experiments were conducted in each lander that tested for possible microbiological chemical reactions. One of these experiments, the labeled release experiment, gave a positive result, indicating the possibility that microbiology in the soil was metabolizing the tested nutrients that were given to it. However, most astrobiologists who are familiar with the Viking results believe that they were not of biological origin, but of exotic Martian chemistry that oxidized the samples. A few scientists and engineers, including the engineer Gilbert Levin, who devised the Viking label the release experiment and was its lead investigator, insist that the evidence was from actual living biology on Mars. Unfortunately, without knowing more, we'll have to wait for future Mars landers and probes to help shed more light on this possible biosignature. In 1984, on the Allen Hills in Antarctica, a meteorite was found by an American meteorite hunting team and was confirmed to have been blasted from the surface of Mars. The meteorite, labeled ALH-84001, may have been shot off Mars about 17 million years ago by an impacting meteorite on Mars. The Mars rock landed in Antarctica about 13,000 years ago. In 1996, a NASA team led by David McKay announced a startling claim that they had found potential alien microfossils within the rock. In addition, they had found magnetite crystals similar to that produced from Earth-based bacteria and some organics and molecules associated with biochemistry, such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, and later some nitrogen-bearing organics. Since then, other Mars meteorites have featured similar characteristics to the Allen Hills rock, such as the Nakla meteorite that fell in Egypt in 1911, and the Yamato 000593 Mars meteorite that fell in Antarctica about 50,000 years ago. Again, further planetary and geological research and study has since found non-biological pathways for explaining most of the tantalizing features in the Mars rocks, such as the cell-like shapes and the sources of the PAH molecules in the rocks. As a result, most scientists have remained unconvinced with respect to the meteorite's biosignature evidence. Biogenic origin is a very big and consequential claim, and therefore rightly requires a greater and more convincing set of data that supports its claim. Could these features in the Mars rocks really be from alien life? Yes, they can be. However, there are other more prosaic explanations as well. We can only hope that more convincing alien evidence will be forthcoming. Several Mars missions, starting in 2006, have detected seasonal fluctuations of the gas methane in its atmosphere. This is a possible biosignature, as methane is known to be produced by biological activities. What has made these detections intriguing is the fact that they change on an annual Martian basis and also from the fact that the gas was detectable. Detectability of methane is important 
because if the gas hangs around for any time, it will be destroyed by Mars' lack of ultraviolet shielding. UV rays break the molecule apart and will leave none intact. Detections of the molecule means it must have some sort of constantly replenishing source. However, like the Venus phosphine detections, the Mars methane is elusive and is sometimes not found. Whenever it is found, it relatively quickly becomes undetectable until more is produced. But it is mainly accepted that puffs of methane are being produced by Mars at seasonally variable concentrations. The big question is, is it being produced from Martian life? While biology is a source of methane, it is certainly not the only source. This is a hotly debated point among astronomers and astrobiologists. Other non-biological sources for the Martian methane have included soil reactions, volcanism, meteorites, and electrical discharges from dust storms. Again, this potential biosignature is an open question, so stay tuned. There are future missions to Mars under development, including a sample return mission. Those may help greatly in determining solutions to the Mars rock biosignatures and the methane evidences. A lot of these results and findings may leave us frustratingly unsatisfied, as nothing biologically definitive has yet emerged from the science. But this is okay. We need to be patient and accepting of what the science gives us, and to follow where it leads. As the late astronomer Carl Sagan had said, Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Finding extraterrestrial life will certainly be a supremely consequential claim, and therefore we need to be stringent in what we deem to be scientifically convincing evidence. But we are lucky to be living in a time when we have the tools and science to begin to unveil the answer. We can do this. Let's keep looking. In our next video, we'll continue the search for biosignatures by investigating the farthest reaches of our solar system and beyond. Thanks for staying with me and turtles all the way down. Bye for now.